What up, y'all? It's your boy Tyson. We're back with episode two of Let Me Relax. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing a video recently that was posted by either the baby or a black youngster, but it has both of them in it. And basically, in the video, they are making jokes about light skinned men, telling them they need to step their game up, this, that, and the third. I believe the baby referred to himself as pretty. I believe black youngster also did. And so, when I first saw the video, I watched it via the YouTuber Chrissy. She does a lot of commentary on colorism, hypergamy, um, misogynoir, um, a lot of issues that go on in our community that we don't really like to talk about. Um, and she's an advocate for dark-skinned women, as am I. If y'all know, watch my channel, y'all know. That's definitely something about me that I just I don't play around with. You know what I'm saying? Um, but nonetheless, going back to that, and I, when I said channel, I was referring to my YouTube channel. If you're not familiar, just Google Tyson Mackey. You'll find everything about me. So, nonetheless, uh, back to the podcast. Oh, and real quick, before we get started, sorry I haven't been back to make an episode in a second. It's just really a lot of stuff been going on. We're starting off 2020 good, though. I got moved in. I went through a lot of situations. If y'all haven't heard my song, TM, First Day Out, go listen to that. It'll pretty much tell you everything you need to know. I pretty much got in a situation with some fake-ass roommates. And um, I had to stay with my aunt and all that. Lived in my car for some time before I went to go stay with my aunt. And it was a whole mess. But nonetheless, we're back now. I have just started out with a new landlord. So far, everything's going good. And I'm just trying to keep positive. So there's real quick an update on me. Now let's go back to the video. So... Um, as I told you on the video, they were basically talking about light skin niggas need to level up, this, that, and the third, and I think the baby and them refer, uh, black young still referred to himself as pretty. So, some points that I took away from the video that I want to discuss with y'all, or the points that I took away, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, first off, I want to start with the fact that every joke has an ounce of truth within it. Yes, there's comedic relief. And especially when it comes to black people, I feel like we are just inherently declined or inclined to use comedy a lot when it comes to our how, how we cope with pain. You know what I'm saying? The same way that's similar as how slaves used music, jokes, all that stuff. And I do feel like that stuff, although it's, I mean, it's trivial stuff, roasting, stuff like that. It's not to say like, oh, black people made it up. But I feel like we definitely use that or our ancestors definitely used that back in time to, you know, just push through, getting through slavery and stuff like that, music, roasting, joking, all that stuff. And I feel like we've definitely carried it as a culture, you know what I'm saying? And um, not even really roasting, but just using comedy in general, you know what I'm saying, as medicine. That is medicine for a lot of people. But if we're going to be all the way honest, if we're going to talk about this, we're going to be honest, and every joke has an ounce of truth within it. I don't care what you're joking about, racism, LGBT community, um, Jew, Jews, Nazis, whatever. Whatever joke you were telling, no matter how dark, how light, there's an ounce of truth. There's a piece of you that really does feel that way. So I want to get that out the way first. Um, now, I want to bring up how colorism throws off the balance specifically within our community. For those of you who are well-known or well-versed in this situation or in this um, topic, you know that colorism does not just affect black people. It affects Asian people. It affects, definitely affects Dominicans. It affects um, people in the Hispanic community. It affects everybody. It affects everybody. You know what I'm saying? So um, if you have melanin in you, period, doesn't matter how much, you know what I'm saying, that definitely is something that odds are nine times out of ten, it goes on in your community. However, specifically when speaking about the black community, um, colorism, for whatever reason, it throws off the balance. I don't know if it's a correlation to the slave field or the field slave versus the house slave. I don't know if it's a correlation with that um, or a correlation with just stereotypes that have been passed on for years. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, colorism throws off the balance in our community in this way. The light-skinned or um, the light-skinned women get coined feminine, pretty, you know what I'm saying, or feminine, soft, all that other stuff. Um, I mean, there's the long hair and all that, but we're not really talking about the aspects. Physically, we're talking about, like, soft, vulnerable. They're allowed to be that. They're allowed to cry, da 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 this, and the other. The dark skin men are put on a pedestal as sex symbols, um, symbols of strength, 
um, you know, gods in some forms. And I feel like this rhetoric has been tossed or passed down so much that, like, I know y'all see it. I know y'all see it. If you get on social media, ooh, I want me a chocolate man, da 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 da, all this stuff. I and mean, then we already know niggas love them some light skinned girls. Like, let's just be honest. Um, are some things preference? Yes, but overall, most of this is it stems from colorism and it stems from a deeper issue than just, oh, that's just who you like. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't feel love because it should be tied down to something as simple as a skin tone. Now, you may be that person that you're unproblematic and you just look up one day when you're 40 and realize, you know, majority of the people I've dated look like this or that. All right, you have a type, whatever, so does sweetie. But nonetheless, um, with that balance being thrown off or where the balance being thrown off comes into play is instead of it being um the terms masculine and feminine instead of them being interchangeable with the genders they're interchanged with our skin tone i don't know again i don't know why that correlation is but for whatever reason dark skinned women are coined as masculine they are um coined as manly they're not feminine and you'll see this rhetoric being spewed by dark skinned men and some light skinned men too i'm not going to act like we don't perpetuate it you know what i'm saying but you'll be see it being spewed by all of us in the community um, even um, Lupita was talking about um, to Oprah on one of um, or an interview they had recently. I think it was recent. I want to say, um, and she was talking about how a makeup artist told her that her skin could take anything because her skin is strong, like steel or something like that. And she was like, "Actually, I have very sensitive skin, so we have put so much emphasis on being that strong black woman, independent, don't need a man for nothing." And it's, it's toxic from every way. It's not to say that it's one person's fault. This stuff has been passed down, taught to us. Mama teaches it to you. If she doesn't teach you, I was just talking about a co this with a coworker earlier. If she doesn't teach you, you strong, you don't need a man, da da da, this, any other, then she teaches you to put up with men who are less than you, men who are out of your league, i.e., Tori Hart and Kevin Hart. When they first got together, Tori obviously. I don't know about breadwinner, who was the breadwinner with them, but she obviously definitely helped to raise him up and offer him to go to his light skin come up girl. We see this all the time, and that's why when people say, oh, he can't be colorist, he, his, first, his first baby mama is dark skin, they usually are <laughs> when it comes to these rappers and NBA players. They usually are. However, his wife is usually light or white, if that. Um, so nonetheless though dark-skinned women are looked at as masculine whereas light-skinned men are looked at as feminine and um an example of that is drake people talk about him all the damn time now it, does he also get that because he sings yes and um does he do some questionable things yeah however nonetheless i can't tell you how many times i've heard that term the same way that charlamagne talks about DJ Envy on The Breakfast Club. He doesn't do it as much, I think. I mean, granted, I haven't tuned in in a while. Um, but I don't think he does it as much now. But the way he used to call him a waffle-colored Negro. You know what I'm saying? And again, like I said, a joke is a joke. That's true. However, there's an ounce of truth within every joke. A part of you really does feel that way with that joke that you are telling. And we're not going to be stupid about that. We're not going to play coy and act like, oh, that's, you know what I'm saying, a myth or not true. It is. So... Nonetheless, that, for whatever reason, I don't, again, I don't know why the balance is thrown off, but for some reason, masculinity and femininity, they don't, are, when it's on the flip side of things, when it's dark-skinned women and light-skinned men who both get bear the brunt of colorism, for whatever reason, uh, they're, interchange they're not interchangeable with gender. You know, so if you're dark skinned women, dark skinned woman, they're going to look, people are going to, and I've seen it all the time. I've seen how people, like, I watch how people treat different people of different shades. I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? You may not even realize you're doing it. Just like some white people may not realize some of the shit they say or do is anti black. You may not realize it. You know what I'm saying? Ignorance is not above anybody nowadays. So, nonetheless, it's not to say that everything is intentional, but some of the shit that you see, like Gilbert Arenas coming for Lou Heed and Yango, um, Gilbert Arenas of all people like you know what I'm saying I'm not here to bash anybody on their looks but he shouldn't be quick to talk about how ugly anybody is and that's all I'm going to say on that <sighs> but moving on from there um, I want to talk about kind of how I felt about the issue uh, about the video and then also my issues with dark skinned men who give that mush mouth white supremacy excuse like um, oh that came from white supremacy that are 
okay, this is how I view it. White people created it, and we continue it. We masquerade it. We, we are still masquerading it. We still continue colors into this day. We still pre- practice it. We still treat our lighter skinned daughters like they're and put them on a pedestal, um, do- better than our dark skinned daughters, put them on a pedestal. Um, Lupita had talked about that when her sister her first came out, how her aunts and uncles oohed and awed over um, how she looked and um, how her sister looked. Not how Lupita looked, but how her sister looked. And it made her feel like, wow, y'all didn't give me all this attention when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Or y'all don't give it to me now. So something must be wrong with me. That's when she first started feeling like she wasn't good enough. And as beautiful as Lupita Nyong'o is, she still feels that way from time to time. We're all human. But um, nonetheless, going back to the re- um, going back to my issues, um, like I said, they created that system. You don't still have to carry that over to today, and we still do. And you see it all the time. Examples with well, I can't even say dark skin men because the dude actually who um, posted on Twitter about Ari and Tiana some weeks back. He's light-skinned, actually. So I'm not going to sit here and act like it's only dark-skinned men. I would say majority, definitely. You know what I'm saying? If we have to go by just based off of celebrities alone, and then if you look up certain tweets, like it's a whole hatred for dark-skinned women and for light-skinned men because we both get the brunt of colorism on um, these platforms. And I do want to make it very clear, dark-skinned women get it the most. They get it the most. Um, they get it the most, definitely worse than us, but we'd still get the short end of the stick with them. Their, sh- their end is just way shorter. You know what I'm saying? And I do have a lot of compassion when it comes to them. And when I, even when I speak on them, I try to watch my words because I don't want to push out any rhetoric that I might have been told or subconsciously taught. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was uh, one of my issues with a lot of white men who, there are black men who turn to that. Oh, white supremacy made it this way. Okay, um, I have very fucked up, fam- a fucked up family. For those of y'all who do not know, if you don't know by now, you probably haven't been really paying attention to my last few YouTube videos. But I spoke about issues that we had going on. We're, uh, some of them, not all of them. Um, but it's a very toxic family. I can choose to say I have a toxic family and just be a jackass for the rest of my life. Or I can make it better for myself. I can say, I don't want that for my kids. I don't want that for my um, family, the one that I plan to raise someday. I don't want to be a pushover like my father was with his wife. I don't want to do that with my wife. I can make the change to be better. That's what I can do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to walk it back to another issue that I do have with dark-skinned men when it comes to colorism. Um... But let's go on down to my next bullet point. Um, I, and this is going to be a little petty, but I'm just going to be honest. For us to be so feminine, I'm not calling myself pretty, and I'm not calling myself a bad bitch, um, a, uh, i.e. ASAP Rocky, or fucking like one, i.e. his sex day. Just saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? You'll see dark-skinned men. I remember when the man from um, Black Panther, he came out and said that black women made him feel pretty. And verbiage is everything when you're speaking, and context is everything. But verbiage just plays a big role, and it just it kind of made me feel a little um. And when he said they made him feel pretty, you know what I'm saying? Handsome, cute, that's fine. Um, adorable, maybe. But pretty, that that was a um, it was a bit off for me to watch that um, or to see him tweet that. I think he tweeted it. I don't think he said it in the video. But either way, say it, tweet it, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's just something that I want to put to the side real quick. And they, for, for us to be so feminine and so in our feelings, these, this is not the baby and the black youngster is not the first people to say shit like this. There's plenty of entertainers, dark skin entertainers out there who have made remarks about light skinned men. So, um, nasty remarks. So I want to make that very clear. They're not the first and they won't be the last, sadly. Um, and then I want to move on before I walk back to another issue that I have with them. Um, to finalize, or this is my final bullet point, I do have some pictures that I want to discuss here too, but um, you making it an ugly girl convo is very telling. And when I say that, or ugly man, whichever way you want to go, um, in regards to the Ari Lennox situation and the Tiana Taylor situation, just to mirror this situation kind of, because they're both incidents of colorism, you making, trying to say, oh, it's just ugly girls that feel that way. Um... If you are gonna sit here and uplift a Justine Sky or a Chili from T um, TLC who doesn't look like your average black woman, 
then you are telling what you feel about true blackness. Because those are not what your, your average black woman does not look like that. We're speaking about in the United States, I'm not talking about all the way in Africa, where there's some blonde hair kids with blue eyes. We're not speaking about them at this point. You're deflecting. Let's be honest if we're going to have this conversation. The average black person has a Negro nose with Jackson 5 nostrils and baby hair with afros. And that is what an average black person looks like. And for the people who say, oh, we come in all shades and sizes, is that true? Yes. However, if that was not, um, or if that was so true, then you wouldn't be bothered when these white people are wearing blackface. And when they're getting, um, for instance, the Kardashians, when they're getting surgeries to look like what the average black person looks like. You wouldn't be upset in your feelings because we all come in different shades and sizes, right? Right? All right, then. So let's, let's stop being disingenuous with these conversations and start being honest with ourselves. It's okay to say, you know what, I fucked up. I myself have probably said some anti-black shit back in the day. Definitely. Very much so. And um, all I can do at that point is realize what I did and make an effort to be better. And real quick, before I go into, well, before I touch back on my main issue with dark skin men, I want to um, go over these pictures. I want to, they're from, I see Chrissy's little emblem in the picture. So I, um, I um, was watching her video. So she did inspire me to kind of do this podcast. Um, and I just kind of, I watched it maybe two days ago. And I was like, I just, I have to talk about this. I want to. You know what I'm saying? And so... Um, there's this lady who tweeted, y'all don't know how happy I am that he got a black ass child, LOL. She not diet black or anything, nothing, or, or nothing. Jesus, heart face, heart face, heart face. So that was a black woman who tweeted that, and it was a picture, it's a picture of the baby and his daughter. So for one, we need to stop congratulating black men for getting with black women. Like, if you're going to give somebody a cookie, give them something that's worth it. You know, if he's giving back to a black business, okay, then we can clap for you. You know, if he's um, building up schools for specifically targeting black children to have, you know, um, a, a, or a black private school, something like that. That is something I can give you a cookie for. I'm not giving you a cookie for having um, a full black child. Like I said, most of these entertainers and celebrities, when they first start out, the come up woman is a light skinned woman or a white woman. The beginner woman, when they didn't have shit, just look at Tori Hart and Kevin Hart's situation. Now he's with Anika. That's usually what they do. So you having your first child being dark skin, that does not save you from being colorist. If all your kids are dark skin, it doesn't save you from being colorist. You can still be colorist and have dark skin children. You can still be colorist and date a dark skin person. Like you're not exempt for these things or exempt. So. Seeing what she said, the child is not diet black. Let's go on ahead and look at some of the responses to how people felt about her. Remember, this is them talking about her talking about a light-skinned girl. Only reason I'm tweeting like this is because the Ravens ain't on TV yet, and that tweet of old girl fawning over the baby's daughter not being diet black, in quotes, kind of made me mad. Then another person said, that diet black comment towards the baby, J J-I-T, um, maybe that's the word for daughter, I don't know, was beyond coonish. So those are two responses from two black men, two dark-skinned black men. So I find it very funny that we can sit here and talk about light-skinned men and make fun of them all day long, but you talk about a light-skinned girl, and all of a sudden the internet is in a frenzy. Hell, imagine if the baby and black youngster, imagine if that was Ari Lennox and the rapper No Name saying, oh, um, light-skinned girls need to step their shit up, da 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 just They would get dragged up and down the internet. So, and that's an issue that I have with dark-skinned men. They, they want to play the hypocrisy game. They want to play optional um, hotep. They want to play hotep, and I don't like that shit. If it's not okay for us to talk about um, the girl being uh, diet black, don't talk about mixed black men, or don't talk about black men. You know, y'all want to sit here and every... Um, Y'all want y'all don't want to otherize light skinned women, cause you want to keep them on a pedestal. But when they say light skinned man, oh no, he's not black enough. You know what I'm saying? I thought we were all different shades. I thought we all came in all different shades. So I need people to keep the same energy. And finally, I want to get to um, my last issue with dark skinned men. And it's not just dark skinned men that do this. It's, um, if you want to go up the spectrum, brown skin, I guess. I've never really seen the differentiation with men being made, but whatever, or being made with men of brown skin, but whatever. The average dark skinned man, let me say that. The, let's talk, let's say the average hotep. Excuse me. There's not all dark skinned men are putting on that they are for, you know, against white supremacy, all that stuff, racism. 
So the average hotep, my issue with the average hotep is at the drop of a dime, they will walk a light-skinned man or a dark-skinned woman like a dog. And I really have an issue with that. Like, we're all supposed to be here for y'all when y'all are getting gunned down. Because let's keep it real, most of the black men that are going through police brutality, they don't look like me. They do not look like me. They are as dark as this microphone I'm recording on. They do not look like me. The average black man that is going through police brutality, they look like the baby. They look like black youngster. So you want us to be there to fight for y'all when y'all are getting gunned down, when y'all are getting killed, when y'all are getting um, arrest, wrongfully arrested. You want us to be there for your fight. But when it comes to issues about dark-skinned women or light-skinned men, Oh, it's just, or, or when it comes to joking about us, the joke can be on us, it's okay, but we can't joke about your little light-skinned daughter. God forbid we say that. God forbid we say, um, Lala looks like an animal, or Evelyn Lozada looks like an animal. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and she got a hard-ass face. <laughs> so, but nobody's sitting there, as Ari pointed out, nobody's sitting there calling women of other races animals. A whole collective, no, they are not. Let's not be disingenuous. Have somebody probably referred to them as animals? Yes, Evelyn Lozada got a hard ass face. However, are people doing it at the same manner that people are talking about black women? No. And as Ari said, why is that your freedom of speech? Why do you want to sit here and talk about, down about dark skinned women? Why are you sitting here making jokes about light skinned men? Jokes that are really hidden with um, insecurities because I'm just gonna keep it honest. That's what I saw when I watched that video. Now I do like the baby. I like his music. I, I can't really fuck with him, fuck with him anymore because he his antics are just he's doing too much. He's doing too much. And this video really turned me off because I feel like we have enough division going on in our community. You know what I'm saying? And as I said, yes, it was a joke. It wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. And jokes all stem from somewhere. And I know damn well if Drake and I God strike me right now if I'm lying, if Drake has sat here and made a joke about a dark-skinned man, y'all would flame him for the rest of 2020. Y'all would drag that man. Probably worse than when y'all fucking dragged him when y'all found out he was hidden, hiding a son from y'all, because some of y'all done forgot about a Diddy Don. But um, yeah, y'all would drag that man up, and I ain't had to do that child like that. Let me relax. See, that's why this podcast called that. <laughs> but nonetheless, back to what I was saying, y'all would drag him, drag him from the pits of hell and back. I remember when he just um, got, um, when, it, when uh, Pusha T put him on the blackface, and that was bad enough. So God forbid, especially now after that, he make a joke about Pusha T's dark skin or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's a lot of smoke and mirrors when it comes to colorism People that people are trying to put up. It's a lot of gaslighting. And um, like I said, my issues with black men is the average black men, they're all against supremacy and racism, but they don't know what colorism looks like. All of a sudden, you turn to colorism. They don't know how, uh, like, that's just not associated with racism, or it's not a, it's not, um, it doesn't seep out from racism. And they don't want to hold any responsibility for it. Now, as I said, the man who made the post about Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor was a light skinned man. So we are not exempt from participating in colorism either. Neither are dark skinned women. Some of them do it their damn self. The, the whole thing with the um, OG basketball wives situation. Um, Malaysia and um, damn, what's that bitch name? Kristen. Yeah, Malaysia and Kristen. They ain't exempt from it. They participated in that shit. Um, sorry. So at any rate, back to what I was saying. Nobody is exempt from being a colorist. It doesn't matter who you are. And I feel like um, the issues that we have in our community, we need to talk about them and we need to gain some healing. I understand. When it comes to dark-skinned men, some of them hate, you know, dark-skinned women because they were told they were ugly when they were little. But as I said, I come from a family full of shit. Not full. I don't want to say all my outer extended family, but my main family is full of shit. And I've chosen not to be like that. It is a choice. Do I have to work at it? Yes. Especially being that I am a lot like my mom, and she is a mean person. So I have to work at that every day. Let's work at not being colorist. Let's work at not having this next generation of children, dark-skinned girls, and light-skinned men, to a degree, hate themselves and feel like I'm too black or feel like I'm not black enough. You know what I'm saying? But yet and still, we'll go crazy for damn Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's baby. 
which looks like white chocolate at the best, <laughs> if that. You know what I'm saying? We'll celebrate little wins like that. But let's get a forum going, talking about Michael Ely and um, Boris Kojo, and let's see how many dark-skinned men want to throw jokes and throw stones and shit, throw shade. So, at any rate, y'all let me know what y'all think down below. And that's not to say that light-skinned men don't go in on dark-skinned men. I've seen it well both ways. But this particular incident, I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. I took all the baby's music off my phone. I really not. I just wasn't down with it. I, didn't, I wasn't feeling it. Uh, uh, and then all the other stuff he got going on, he really need to calm down somewhere. Sit down and eat your food. Well, he get his ass locked up. And then, you know... It'd be sad just to see where his career is going and um, or where it could be headed to. You know what I'm saying? If he keeps stuff on the up and up, it'd be very sad. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, y'all let me know what y'all thought. Reach out to me on social media. I am going to be posting this on YouTube, so comment down below. Let me know if there's anything y'all want me to talk about. Excuse me. In particular, I'll need a couple days to research it just so I can be accurate and know what I'm saying. But, um... You know, that's just journalistic integrity. So, y'all let me know what y'all thought. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next episode of Let Me Relax. Peace.